Look at this headline by the CBC. Head of UBC Board of Governors resigns after liking racist far-right comments on Twitter. Hmm. So he didn't write them, he, he just liked them, he just clicked like. But they were racist and also far-right, according to the CBC. I think I know what racist means. It means judging people by their skin color rather than on the content of their character or their merit. Or using really derogatory words about different races, like Wendy Mesley apparently did. I mean, calling a black person the N-word, like Wendy Mesley did, definitely racist. Did the head of the University of British Columbia do that? <laughs> it's hard to imagine that he would. I mean, UBC is about two-thirds visible minority these days. In fact, only about one out of six students there is a white male, according to the Vancouver Sun. Hard to believe that the board chair of such a school would say something racist or even like it. I'm skeptical. And far right? Well, to the CBC, that just means voting for any party other than the Liberals or the NDP. So that's quite possible. Let's read some more from this anonymous article. I note there's no reporter's name on it. That's a lack of accountability right there, isn't it? But look at this, another detail in the subheadline. Michael Korenberg liked tweets disparaging the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, hmm. Well, now the story's already changing, isn't it? The blazing headlines was that he liked something racist, like if Wendy Mesley had tweeted the N-word and then this UBC chair had liked that, maybe saying, right on Wendy or something, you tell him. But now it looks like he just liked a tweet that didn't support the Black Lives Matter movement. Now that's different. First of all, most Black Lives Matter activists are white, especially up here in Canada. Here's footage from a Toronto protest outside police headquarters. Pretty white. Uh, they were protesting a, a black rights cause. Just so you know, the police chief in Toronto himself is black and all these protesters are white. And if you think there's some historic reckoning that needs to happen in Toronto, I'm pleased to let you know that Upper Canada abolished the slave trade back in 1793. Not that it was a big deal up here to begin with. There were literally only 16 black people in all of Toronto back then. Not 16,000 or 1,600, just, just 16. That was 227 years ago. And you know, the British Empire literally bought the freedom of every slave in this jurisdiction, banned slavery, bought the freedom of every one of them. So that's why we have white protesters outside a black police chief's office. And so you see where I'm going with this, disparaging the Black Lives Matter movement, in this case actually means mocking some rich white liberal kids and standing up for a working class policeman um, who's black. I don't think that's racism, do you? We haven't even got past the headlines and the story is already changing, isn't it? Typical CBC fake news. So here we go. The chair of the University of British Columbia's Board of Governors has resigned after liking racist and conspiracy theory posts on Twitter, including tweets disparaging the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, there was a conspiracy theory too? What, like the one that the CBC pushed for three years that Russia rigged the US election that was finally debunked by Robert Mueller after an exhaustive investigation? What conspiracy theory do they mean? I look forward to finding out. Michael Korenberg's resignation comes after UBC Students Against Bigotry posted recent photos of his Twitter account that showed tweets he liked, including praise for U.S. President Donald Trump, references to protesters as violent looters, and a conspiracy theory that compared the Black Lives Matter protests to Adolf Hitler's paramilitary tactics. Huh. Okay, so the story's changed again, hasn't it? He tweeted praise for Trump. Actually, stop. He liked a tweet by someone else that praised Trump. So which part is that? Is that the racist part or the far right part? Because Trump is the president of the United States and about 50% of Americans support him and he's democratically and constitutionally elected. How on earth does that make him far right? Or is that the racist part? Should I ask Wendy Mesley what's racist and what's not? And here we learn the conspiracy theory part, comparing Black Lives Matter riots to Hitler's, Hitler's paramilitary tactics. I'm not sure how that's a conspiracy theory. 
that's a comparison. You can agree with the comparison or disagree with it. I'd like to see the tweet myself. I don't trust a word the CBC says, but how is a comparison of two things a conspiracy theory? Did Michael Kornberg say that Black Lives Matter was working with Hitler or something? That would be quite something. I guess we'll find out soon in the story. In a statement Saturday night, the university said Kornberg would be stepping down from his position on the Board of Governors immediately. The Board of Governors and Mr. Kornberg would like to recognize that this has been deeply hurtful to members of our community and that UBC has zero tolerance for racism and recognizes that real harm is created from both overt and structural racism, the statement said. Did this guy, Kornberg, probably not one in a hundred UBC students could name him, not one in a thousand would care about him. Did he really deeply hurt UBC students? Did he create real harm by liking a tweet? Really? I'd like to meet a student who said they were deeply harmed by that. I'm going to go out on a limb here. That student who is complaining isn't black. There are very few black students at UBC. I'm going to guess he isn't Asian. There are very many Asian students at UBC. Uh, but I bet that this is an angry white leftist. But really, it's seeped into the administration of UBC now, too. If they're talking about overt and structural racism, what on earth are they even talking about? Uh, I mean, the school is majority minority. No one knows what they're talking about. Not even the CBC, I don't think. But that's OK. Uh, this chair of the board liked a Trump tweet, so he's racist and has to go. In a statement on the board's website, Kornberg said he thoughtlessly supported regressive voices that attempted to discredit broad-based legal and necessary protest. He, he, he did all that? <laughs> See, here's where my sympathy for the man evaporates, I'm afraid. They sacked you. You're a titan of industry. You're a man who's given thousands of hours to community service. You're not the chair of the Board of Governors of UBC for the thrill of it, for the profit of it, for the fun of it. You're doing it to help. The university is a charity, of course. The chief job of the board is to run it effectively and raise as much money as possible. And you let some Antifa thug run you out of town because you liked a Trump tweet? There are 82.3 million people who follow Donald Trump on Twitter. Not sure how many retweet him or like his stuff. I think it's a lot. Um, if you fire everyone who does that, you might even have to fire Justin Trudeau, who has tweeted or retweeted Trump more than 20 times. Listen to this grovel. Listen to this man pandering to the stupidest, most malicious people on campus. And by that, I'm not sure if I mean the far left agitators who said they were deeply hurt or the other officials at the university administration who thought this was such an emergency, they literally fired the chair on a Saturday night. It was so urgent. Here's what he said, though. As a result, my interactions have been interpreted in a manner that creates questions about who I am and what I believe in, the statement said. Yeah, mate, you, you can't help how dishonest and malevolent people interpret what you say. You, you can't control what they think of you. Uh, let alone what you don't say, what you just click like on. They're always going to interpret it in things in the craziest, most negative way. It, it's up to you to be a leader, to be a grown-up and say, there, there, little one, change your diapers and calm down. You're in university now. You might actually encounter an idea that's different from your own from time to time. You might want to learn how to handle that in life. But alas, he didn't quite say that. I wholeheartedly apologize for them, particularly to the students, faculty, and staff of UBC. <laughs> really? I don't believe it's a wholehearted apology. I, I just don't believe that a man of that character and accomplishment and honesty and a lifetime of public service truly believes in his whole heart that he did something wrong by liking a tweet by the President of the United States. I don't believe that it's a wholehearted apology. This is probably the first lie he's told. Here's more from the CBC. In his statement Saturday, Kornberg said he is committed to erasing racism, hate, and discrimination from society. Well, not discrimination and hate against people who have a conservative point of view, apparently. Imagine if you were a mere professor or even a lowly student at UBC. If the Board of Governors chair himself has to grovel and scrape like a capitalist boss in China in a struggle session under Mao Zedong, 
Imagine what they'll do to you. On Twitter, he said he supports Black Lives Matter and that he hurt people in liking certain posts on social media. Hey, do you really think he supports Black Lives Matter? I mean, the protest movement of radicals and rioters. I'm sure he supports black people and their lives, and he thinks that they matter. But I'm talking about the political group with that name. Do you really think he supports it? I don't understand why he's making this self-denunciation if he's already been fired. Does he think this will get him his job back? Why on earth would he even want his job back? He acknowledged racism exists in Canada and that he wants to be part of the solution, but did not say how he would contribute to doing this or what his next steps would be. <laughs> now, here's the important part. I've read everything in this story about Korenberg himself, other than a few more lines of his groveling apology and some boilerplate comments from other UBC administration officials. You can see I, I read the substantive parts of the story to you. The only tweet that they show in the news story is Korenberg's groveling apology. So where, where's the racist part again? Where, where's the far right part? Where, where's the conspiracy theories I was promised? I see the smear against him. Nice going, smearing a Jewish philanthropist as a white supremacist far right racist. No wonder the CBC hid the identity of whoever wrote this story. Maybe Wendy Mesley wrote it. <laughs> I mean, if you call a black man the N-word, you probably won't have any compunction calling a Jewish man another N-word, Nazi. The CBC really is the lowest, isn't it? But I'm genuinely curious. He was sacked. He humiliated himself. And apparently he deeply hurt a lot of people, even though not a single one of these people was named. So what did he really do? As in, what are these tweets that he liked? Isn't that central to the story here? How could that possibly be left out of, of this story? It was the headline, wasn't it? Unless, stay with me here, unless it's a lie, unless it's fake news, unless it wasn't really racist and far right and Nazi conspiracy theory stuff, the CBC wouldn't lie, would it? I mean, they wouldn't lie, would they? Well, the CBC referenced a censorship committee at UBC called UBC Students Against Bigotry. I don't actually think they're against bigotry. I'm not sure if they're actually students either. I think they're probably more accurately called professional protesters for cancel culture and deplatforming. But the CBC says they're the source of things uh, on their Twitter account. So I went to their Twitter account to find what I couldn't on the CBC page. And here's the first one I saw. Does Michael Korenberg support the white supremacist in the White House and his calls for violence? Oh, is that it? Seriously, that's the white supremacist tweet we're talking about here. It's, I thought it was some legit KKK tweet or even a Nazi tweet. I, I don't even know if those are allowed to exist uh, on Twitter, frankly. That's the racist thing we're talking about, a Trump tweet? Oh, my God. Now, now there, there are three images in that tweet. You see them? The first is a picture of Korenberg. All right. Uh, the second is a criticism of Obama for criticizing Trump. So it's just partisan bickering, really. And then the third is just a White House tweet complaining that liberals criticize Trump a lot. And, and that's, I swear to God, that's it. That's the racist, far right, white supremacist conspiracy theories. Well, there are a few more tweets. I'll show them to you quickly. It's all the same. Uh, here's the next one. I, I think you will find Trump was justified in his actions after Antifa, uh, against Antifa after you watch this video. So it's an opinion about riots. It doesn't mention Black Lives Matter, actually. None of the images do yet, do they? And this one from Trump's son retweeting a video that you can't see here. Trump Jr. says, thankful these business owners have a Second Amendment so they can protect themselves and their businesses from these violent looters. You can't see the video there, but you know, I know that video because believe it or not, I, I know this sounds crazy, but it was actually me who popularized that video. In my 10 years on Twitter, wasting time, I've tweeted 140,000 little comments in 10 years. What a waste of time. But I remember that one because that was the most watched, most retweeted thing I've, I've ever said. More than 3.7 million people saw my tweet. Staggering, because 
take a look at the video that for some reason neither the UBC fascists nor the CBC fascists nor this UBC censorship group actually showed. I'll show it to you as I tweeted it with my caption that was then picked up and shared so widely it made its way up to Donald Trump Jr. So this is the video. Lawful black firearms owners standing guard outside their businesses. And look. They said, they said run up in here and see what happened. I'm fair out here with them blicks on them. Blick, blicks on them. Run up in this. Black on. Nigga. You see that? Black on. Run up in this bitch. Oh, my mama, we gonna... Yeah, is that the white supremacist part or the Nazi street gang part? Because I saw Trump Jr. quoting a Hispanic candidate cheering on black businessmen who were protecting their stores with lawful firearms. What's the racist part of that again? <laughs> or this. Trump calling for law and order. Uh, here's the female chair of the Republicans criticizing the white mayor of Seattle for allowing Antifa to run wild. Is law and order inherently racist? And say, by the way, have you noticed the word black hasn't appeared yet anywhere? Why is this UBC censorship committee assuming the riots and looting are being done by black people? Talk about racist. They have more, but I promise you, it's all just blue chip Republicans, the president, the White House, the head of the Republican Party, Senator Lindsey Graham. That's it. Here's the Republican Party, Republican officials, Mike Pence, Team Trump, Donald Jr., even the racist in chief himself, sometimes several tweets a day, pictured here are just a few of them. Is MAGA Mike Kornberg the reason why far-right extremists run rampant at UBC? Hey, I got a question for you. Do you really think far-right extremists run rampant at the UBC? That's news to me. Uh, I wish I had known before I would have gone there instead of the liberal law school I went to at University of Alberta. Of course, it's a lie that the CBC regurgitates. I'll show you the tweets this censorship committee thinks are racist. Um, a tweet mocking Joe Biden over his Monday morning quarterbacking about the pandemic. This tweet of a Democrat trying to put on a mask. You can't see the video here again. I recognize this one again because it was so funny. Can I show it to you? Here's how it actually looks. Thank you. I have to tell you, you need a heart of stone not to laugh at that. Where's the racism part? Is it that he's wearing an African kente cloth? Yeah, well, he's a Democrat. Take it up with him. This one, where Trump thanks George P. Bush, uh, well, he happens to be Hispanic. A and this one is just about Republican fundraising. I'm showing you exactly what these tweets are that he liked. I'm literally going through the entire case against Kornberg that these UBC censors had. I haven't left anything out, I swear. I've shown you 100% of the images in their tweets so far. In fact, I've shown you more than they showed you because I remember what those two videos were, and I think these censors were being deceptive. In the first case, it was actually Trump Jr. praising black businessmen. In the second, the goofy guy culturally appropriating the Kente cloth was a Democrat. Now, I'm not going to show you all of the rest. They, they're really just as boring. Did Kornberg not even look through the case against him? before confessing to being a bad, bad man? Did he not even look at the charges he was pleading guilty to? He said he honestly didn't know his Twitter account was even public. I believe that. He's a boomer. He's not a millennial. He probably thought it was private. I, I believe that. But still, so what? You like to tweet where the head of the Republican National Committee boasts about fundraising. So you have to quit your job? Where's the far right part? I'm still waiting for that. Where's the racist part? Where's the Black Lives Matter part? I read every single tweet in the evidence against Kornberg. The word black doesn't even appear, let alone Black Lives Matter. This did appear, though. It's from Mike Pence, the vice president. He says, from the earliest days of our administration, President Trump has fought tirelessly to protect our nation's most vulnerable. Today, we strengthened our commitment to fighting for America's seniors as we continue our whole of America response to the coronavirus. So that, that's how the censorship committee showed it. Uh, here's the original. Let me zoom in on that last picture there. So you can see there's seven people at the cabinet table in addition to the president and the vice president. Two are women and two are black. 
including Ben Carson, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. So, so is this the racist part or the conspiracy theory part? I'm not sure if the CBC that abided an N-word dropping anti-black bigot like Wendy Mansley, you know, they didn't fire her for saying the N-word. They only fired her when word leaked out to the media that she had done so. I'm not sure if I'm ready to take lectures on racism from the network of Wendy N-word Mesley. But this isn't just fake news. This is defamation. This is pure lying. This is an out-of-control state broadcaster doing a smear job on a leading public citizen. If only Michael Corrin weren't such a coward. If, if only he had said, no, sorry, I'm not racist. No, sir, I, I didn't even mention Black Lives Matter or Nazis or conspiracies. You did all that. If only he told them to go to hell. Instead, he accepted their lies and caved into the mob and apologized for what? And in so doing, he made those laws into those lies into false truths and he wrote his own epitaph what a shame hey when they come for you what will you do whimper and beg friends it won't save you it won't save you so you might as well be honest till the end real talk for a moment if you're being deplatformed like this drop me a line ezra at rebelnews.com i'll help you if i can look someone's got to stand up to these fascists that's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.